The Data Exchange SDK has uh, recently introduced support for headless mode, bringing exciting news for customers interested in automation. Consider the possibility of running tasks in the background overnight on design models that have been updated by architects during the day. This demo walks you through creating a data exchange in the headless mode. The tools we're using are Autodesk, Data Exchange, .NET SDK 3.3.1, and uh, Data Exchange GraphQL Explorer. If you're a beta customer, you will likely receive the SDK packages through Autodesk Feedback Community website. You will download this zip file, unzip the Nugget packages on your local machine, like what I did in here. Next, we're going to update our app config file by adding our client ID, client secret, and callback. Go to My Apps page, or you can also click your avatar and click Applications. This also brings you to My Apps page. So this is your client ID, this is your secret. And please note that the callback URL needs to have a trading slash, like this one. So this one does not have a trading backslash, so it will not work because this one I created a while ago. So paste those values in here. Before you build, remember to set this compiler's target platform to x64 and build. Okay, so now we're ready to run the demo. If you run the command for the first time, it will ask you to enter username and password using the browser. Since I already did that, so it will um, reuse that token. And you can see here, it's going to use that something called folder URN, and it has a long URN here, and also a project URN. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to the, again, that uh, GraphQL API, get your hubs, the hub ID, and here is your, uh, and once you get your hub ID, you get your projects. So once you get that, the first step done, we will uh, create a empty container in Autodesk Construction Cloud. So this is the one that we just created here. It's an empty uh, container here. So next step is to send the real data into this container. First, we'll create a Revit element. Um, you can see here, our specified ID along with the Revit category, which is called a structural beam system and the Revit family and a type. So once we got this, so I forgot this one, but then this one will have a binary geometry to represent your beam. So for this version, we support OBJ, IFC, and a step file. And it also has the capability of doing some geometry primitives such as points, lines, and polylines. So they're really useful if you're drawing 2D plans or if you're using only center lines to represent your beam instead of sending the whole um, detailed geometry. So once you get the geometry data, this step is to create a what we call building parameter. The building parameter is called face created and has a data type of string and has a value of face two. Next, we try to create a custom parameter. So this custom parameter is called EU file rating. So you can see here, this is a little bit more involved, the schema ID. Look at here, it seems like each data exchange has its own unique uh, schema namespace. So that's why it's, uh, maybe that's why it's a little bit more involved here. And the same thing, once you have this ID, then you will specify the data type. Uh, here, I specified as a string uh, because um, I want a value of A1. Lastly, once we got our data, uh, we will finally publish this data to that data exchange container we just created. Now it says your data exchange has been created uh, with the name. Um, that's the one we just saw in, the, um, in here. Um, so you can see here, it uh, actually has this, um, uh, the spinning icon is gone. The last part of this demo is to uh, inspect the data inside the data exchange we've just created. So there's uh, several ways to inspect the data. Uh, most common way is just go to uh, using the ACC viewer. And you can see the beam we just created. And uh, here are the parameters. Another way is using the GraphQL, uh, which is probably better because it gives you both the visual as well as the uh, GraphQL query. So for this, we need two things. One is the exchange ID, and then the other one is the URN. The URN is used by the, uh, the viewer. 
where uh, you, you can see exactly what we just saw. But you were saying, um, like in the real production, um, you're probably not interested in everything, but you're only interested in certain category uh, of certain parameter. So that's uh, uh, what we're gonna show you here. So we got exchange ID in here. And the category is, um, so before we get a category, so we'll probably need to get this one first. So we got everything in here. So we know that the uh, the category is exactly the same as we just used in the .NET application. So that's our category. And then we're interested in two properties. One is the building uh, parameter and the other one is the uh, custom parameter. So you can see the building parameter is uh, pretty straightforward. That's exactly what we used in the .NET app. However, the custom parameter um, is a slightly complicated because it has that uh, unique um, schema ID. So you can see here. D here. Okay, now we got our response here. So you can see here, these are all the structural beams here, uh, which is one, and uh, this is our uh, parameters, which is uh, fire rating and the phase created. So that's all for my demo. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.